Hi, welcome to the video. Today we are sitting on the ground talking about my snake and how he is genetically his own twin. Hi, greetings, hola. So we're, we're kind of filming in a weird, a weird spot today. It's, it's the ground, we're filming on the ground. I'm sitting on the ground. I'm not feeling too hot today, but I really want to get this video done. I wanted to get it up in December, but because of how long I'm taking, it's obviously gonna be after the new year. Happy new year, hi. 2022, Did 2021 even happen? I don't really know. All I really remember is 2021 coming to an end, thinking, thank God it's over. 2021 is gonna be so much better. And then it was just more 2020. Take 2020 and stretch it out another year. And then it was over. It, it never got to that point where it was better. Per se. I mean, for me, it was better because I was getting healthier, but situation-wise, I mean, not too much better. Hopefully this year is better than 2021, which, let's be honest, was just 2020 part two. 2020 re-released with bonus features, including new variants of COVID. This video is going to be about one of my snakes, and I just felt like sitting in my bed was a little too casual. It's not like this is really a professional setup. But, I stopped myself when trying to say that the bed didn't look like professional enough. Because I mean, what is this? I'm on the ground. So today we were talking about one of my snakes. This one, right here. Actually, his little head actually is right there, if you can see. But if not, this guy. So Gemini is a six-year-old ball python. And I know what you're thinking if you are into the reptile hobby, what is so special about a ball python to make a whole video about them. But also you're probably not thinking that because you read the title. Now the thing about Gemini that really caught people's attention is his pattern, the way he looks, his appearance. He's a special looking fella. So unique that if you type in on Google the type of ball python that he is, he's one of the first ones that shows up and he is the only one that shows up that looks like this. Now in my be wrong because believe it or not I have not seen all the ball pythons on this planet but I have yet to see a ball python that even closely looks like him. He is very unique in his looks and because of that that made him my most expensive snake to purchase. Now the thing about it is it is not his morph specifically that makes him special. As a matter of fact I don't really know what his morph is. I do not know who his mom and dad were so I just don't know what his exact morph is. So that's another thing that really does add to his allure. His mystique. On top of the fact that he looks the way he looks you can can't replicate it by breeding. So when it comes to Gemini, if you were to take a sample of his DNA from the right side of his body and then take another sample of his DNA from the left side of his body, if you were to take a DNA test from both sides of his body, the results would come back saying that each set of DNA is from a different snake. <laughs> the right side and the left side are not the same snake. And this isn't a lab error. No, no, no. Gemini is his own twin. Split right down the middle of his body. He has one little snake on this side, one snake on that side. Yeah, Gemini is his own twin. He has two different snakes and one. While he is his own twin, he does not have like two sets of brains and two sets of hearts or anything. He is one snake, but he's also two snakes. And he's also his own twin. And he's also split right down the middle. But he's one snake, but he's two. But he's one. I'm gonna stop the theatrics now. This weird phenomenon was once thought to be a myth in science, but it turns out it exists. The name they use to describe it is actually something you might even recognize from Greek mythology. Cause you see Gemini here? Well, I don't think you see him, but he's here. Gemini right there, a the little piece of him, all of him. He is something called a chimera. And that's why he's worth close to $10,000. I don't really like to use the word worth with animals because, you know, none of them are worth more than the others. But with that being said, he's worth close to $10,000. Now, chimerism is not something that just happens in snakes. It happens in the whole animal kingdom, even including humans. But with that being said, that does not mean you're going to be split down the middle. If you are a chimera, you might be a chimera right now and you have no idea. Most people who are chimeras will go their whole life without knowing. The most popular picture I can think of that is a depiction of chimerism is of a cat. I believe their name is Jupiter and they're 
I split down the middle of yellow and black. They are widely accepted to be a chimera and that's why I'm gonna refer to them as such. But like I said, just because the most popular examples of chimeras are the ones that are going to have that perfect split down the middle, that is actually the most rare way that chimerism will show itself. Usually you'll never know you're a chimera because all of it is going on internally, not externally. There does not have to be any external discoloration for you to be a chimera. And like I said, the odds of that actually happening are exceedingly rare on top of it already being rare enough to be a chimera in the first place. But the exact rarity of being a chimera is unknown due to how many of them are likely going unreported. For most people, in order to know you're a chimera, you would have to go get your DNA tested from all different places of your body and you'd have to find two locations in your body where your DNA is different. And since most of us don't go poking around our whole body trying to find two different sets of DNA, most people who are chimeras won't ever know it. As of a report in February 2020, there are only about 100 documented cases of chimerism in humans. Doctors agree that there's definitely plenty of more cases than this happening in the world, but even as all their estimations vary, they do all agree that no matter what, it is still going to be rare. It's just not as rare as the numbers are currently depicting. So now that you guys are familiar with the term chimera, let's talk about what actually goes on to create a chimera. A chimera is a single individual that is made up of cells from two or more other individuals, meaning that it has two sets of DNA with two separate sets of code to make two separate sets of people. It's in the same realm as the concept of a conjoined twin, except in this case there'll just be one or more patches on your body that will be the other individual. Your liver could be your twin's liver while everything else isn't. Or your right thumb could be from your twin while everything else is from you. So it gets a little more confusing. It's not two people with two separate parts. It's one person with two or more parts from other people. It's so confusing to explain. You could also technically be a chimera if you get a bone marrow transplant because now you have someone else's DNA inside you. For these ones that are born this way, two embryos fuse together before they are done developing. So then you get the little sets of DNA from both of them. They get into one and they all turn out as one person, but they have different sets of DNA taking place in different parts of the body. Individuals who are born intersex can also be a result of chimerism. When originally you had a male and a female embryo, they fused together before they were done developing and the result could be ending up being intersex. But at the same time, being born intersex does not always make you a chimera and being a chimera does not always mean you'll be born intersex. It's just one of the many ways that chimerism can present itself. An easy way to get a grasp on what chimerism looks like is if you don't look at the natural cases, but instead look at chimeras that are a result of surgery. So if you have a bone marrow transplant, if you have a tissue transplant, if you have an organ transplant, you're technically a chimera now because you have someone else's cells. So just think that transplants happen naturally. So instead of an actual transplant, when you were becoming everything that you are, you picked up some cells that would have been your twin's cells, but you know, you picked them up and you took those cells and those cells turned into your kidney. So in a dumbed down way, you took your twin's kidney. <laughs> you could call it a transplant or you could just straight up call it theft, you know? You stole an embryo cells and used it for your own dang kidney. How dare you? It's basically when two non-identical twins merge together. The reason we don't consider identical twins merging together a chimera is because identical twins will have the same set of DNA and you won't be able to tell the difference when they merge together. So outside of the surgical ways that you would become a chimera, it's all basically down to a very rare genetic mutation. When it comes to chimerism with animals, when they merge with their twin, if their twin does have different coloration than them, they can come out with mixed patterns. Think of tortoiseshell cats. For whatever rich reason, almost all male tortoiseshell cats are chimeras. If you don't know, the term chimera did come from Greek mythology. It was this hybrid creature with the body and the head of a fire-breathing lion, then with the head of a goat on its back, and their tail had a snake's head. Now, there is also the argument that mosaics exist, which are arguably more common than chimeras, and while some people don't know the difference and will call mosaics chimeras, there is a difference. This is when it gets even more confusing. A chimera is a single organism who has cells that come from two or more zygotes, while mosaics have different cells from a single zygote. Chimeras with this exact split down the middle are extremely, extremely rare to see happen. For some reason, we see chimeras more often in cats than other species. My gosh, are you trying to strangle me? He's going so tight, man. Oh my god. Hello, sir. You are squeezing me very tight. Sir, you are squeezing me very tight. 
please uh, thank you ease up a little bit oh you're squeezing harder now oh well whatever you don't understand me why am i even trying chimerism can also happen in plants and then there's the even more weird interspecies chimeras which is a whole thing that is man-made and very odd to talk about very sci-fi weird experimentation it's it's a very odd topic it's a very controversial topic to say the least interspecies chimerism is when an animal carries an organ from another species such as a human this is a man-made situation for the purpose of creating more organ transplant donors one thing that could be a result of chimerism that some people might be a little more familiar with is the idea of heterochromia now you do not have to be a chimera to have heterochromia and again not all chimeras will have heterochromia it's just one of the things that could result in being a chimera and of course heterochromia is having two different eye colors heterochromia could also be from mosaicism it could also just be from genetic genetics, passing it down, you can inherit it. There's more reason than just chimerism to get it. I cannot get him off me. He really likes my neck right now. I can't get my hair out. It's... he's stuck. <laughs> now before I did this video, I did look up cases of chimerism in other species and I found actually a documented case for human chimerism that actually did result in at least one visible discoloration. There's a woman that was diagnosed with chimerism and in this case she did have a fraternal twin that she absorbed in the womb and it turns out that this large birthmark that she always had on her stomach that made one side of her stomach look a little darker ended up being because she had her twin's DNA in that section of her body. The gentleman who bred Gemini had him for four years before I had him. He decided to get out of snake breeding and he was selling his collection which is how I ended up with Gemini. He definitely loved him and I'm sure he would have kept him otherwise. He was sizing down with his collection and he was being very picky about who Gemini went to because he wanted to make sure that Gemini didn't just go to someone where he was tossed into a cage and kind of forgot about. He wanted to make sure that his really special markings got to be shown. So I was really lucky to have found this breeder at the time I did and I'm really lucky that he decided that having him be shown on YouTube was a good enough way to show off his really unique color pattern for anyone who's interested in learning about it. There is a chance that this could have happened by complete luck where this morph activated on this side of his body while the other morph activated on the other side of his body. It's just more likely if this is going to happen it'll be a result of chimerism but then there's also the chance that mosaicism could be the cause more than just a split you know chance. <laughs> split chance. Get it? <laughs> I do jokes. <laughs> I'll be here all night. Can I help you sir? Can I help you? buddy you're around my neck real tight can i help you bubba so yeah he could have pigmentary mosaicism which i'm gonna just be stumbling over all these words but pigmentary mosaicism is a type of mosaicism that only affects the pigmentation and all that is is when an error occurs in the cell division and it doesn't properly divide more most commonly you end up with a portion somewhere in your body that has separate set of dna while the rest is from your other dna but there are chances of having a more 50 50 split it really just depends on the individual and you know every once in a while you get a really rare case <laughs> when it comes to if chimerism causes any kind of illnesses it has been documented that some people with chimerism are infertile but otherwise i didn't really find any kind of illnesses that are inherently linked with chimerism. The only thing I did read in a human case is that same girl that had the skin pigmentation showing did have an autoimmune issue where her body kept recognizing her other DNA as foreign and trying to attack itself, ending up attacking its own body. Because of the way it worked out, this girl had two different immune systems and they kept recognizing each other as foreign and attacking each other and it caused an autoimmune disorder. It's just what happened in her case. But otherwise, I couldn't really find any more information on illnesses that are, you know, intrinsically linked with chimerism. It's just really hard to know when so many people could be a chimera, but you won't really know it unless you test that one piece of DNA that's different than the rest. It only becomes more obvious, again, when you're dealing with chimeras, when they have these physical attributes that do suggest to you, hey, if you try this side and this side, there might be different sets of DNA. So in total, chimerism is not a breed. You can't go shopping for a chimera. This is just a one in a million, one in a who knows how many chance that it will occur, especially on top of that, that you know split that you're looking for is so rare to occur on top of chimerism occurring. So it's really not something that you can purposely go out and shop for. It's just kind of something that you might stumble upon and get lucky with. Plus, like I said, when it comes to cats, they're gonna be chimeras oftentimes and you not even know it. Like I said, male tortoise shells are very often chimeras. Even after chimerism was discovered, it was actually long believed to be impossible for humans until 
people started finding out that it could happen. <laughs> and like I said, there is that chance that that pigmentary mosaicism could be a cause of this. But if you wanna know more about that, other than the short amount that I told you, I'm sorry, this level of information has not yet been unlocked in my head, AKA, I don't know. I don't know enough to tell you anything more. <laughs> All in all, I think chimerism is a really interesting thing that can happen in our animal kingdom. I just wanted to talk more about how Gemini came to be. And yes, I did give him the name Gemini because he has, you know, two faces. I'm sorry, Geminis. I absolutely adore Gemini. He's been a great addition to my family. He's about six, seven years old now, so he's an old little fella. But he's also young because snakes live forever. I'm just really grateful that the breeder trusted him with me and that I'm able to just show you guys such an interesting, interesting happenstance of nature. I don't know. Nature's wild. I hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about the most suspected reason that he looks like this. I got completely distracted and forgot to film an outro, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. As a quick little reminder that this was something that I researched completely on my own. Any normal person has access to the research that I did, and basically meaning that I don't have any higher level of education about this topic. I am not a geneticist of any kind, so I don't know how all this works beyond the surface level. And if you are interested beyond just the little fun facts that I shared, please look into it further because you can learn so much more beyond just the little information that I found out. <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, remind people at the end of this video that this was not supposed to be some expert analysis and you can learn much more information from people much more qualified than I am, I am sure. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll have some other videos coming up pretty soon here, so I hope 2022 is starting out good for y'all, and I'll see you soon.